So the, and I'll answer this for you, Joel, help you save your voice a little bit. So the prior, it was estimated that it would be 25 cents per thousand dollars, the value of property that you're assessed at. That, that's what it was going to cost against your, your tax bill, basically. And that was previous, that was the previous assessment. So as Joel explained in the slide just prior to this one, the total assessed value for the town has gone up, which means the impact to your tax rate is gonna go down. So that 25 cents per thousand will be lower. It, what that number is gonna be exactly, I can't tell you until our assessment is certified, but it could be 19 cents per thousand, it could be 15 cents, we have to wait until that comes back. So your impact over the, the period of the, the borrowing for that it will, will be lessened. Ultimately, the worst case scenario is what is currently being presented and proposed at 25 cents per thousand. Okay. Good question, any others? So the, the question, because you don't have a microphone, I want to make sure everybody can hear, is the ratio that's shown on your tax bill. Was that 0.85, or you said 0.84, but I think it's 0.85 something. Uh, 0.85, 97418, yep, okay. So that that should come out and be equalized. That is the, in effect, what it is that this is about, is to get that equalized, that your assessed value is equal to your fair market value. So yes, it, it will be at set at one or should be close to one depending on timing of everything. Uh, that ratio should, should be much closer and that will fall, and fall within our state statute of being within 10%. Yeah, the state, the state ideally would like you to be as close to one as possible. Uh, obviously fluctuations in market values and things like that um, could, could change that. Uh, based on the current estimate that's being provided by the assessor, we're at about 98.9%. .9%, so as close to one as we possibly could get, uh, given the nature of the data that we have available. Uh, ultimately, as part of this process, we conducted the revaluation of the town through a market revaluation this year. We're doing full revaluations over the next three year period. So a third of properties this year, a third next year, and a third in 2020. Uh, ultimately, as we continue to do those full revaluations, we will hopefully get closer to that one or that 100% ratio. Uh, ultimately, from there on out, instead of doing what we've done in the past where we've maintained values from the last full revaluation, we will be conducting market valuations each year so we will always stay close to that 100% that ratio so that we don't have these 12-year increments and we don't have these uh, large increases in assessed value every five, 10 or 12 years for that matter uh, will come to less of a shock as homeowners. Uh, in addition to that, if the economy or the market were to decline, the values would be reflected more accurately in those circumstances as well. Very good questions, any others? Okay, so if anybody else has questions, they can contact you, Joel, or our assessor. The, the, I know the letter that went out to everybody had the information for our assessor, accurate appraisal, as well as for our town staff if they, if they have questions on these. So thank you for the presentation. Any other information? That's it. All right, thank, thank you. you. taking a pretty direct approach to trying to educate and inform the general public of this particular circumstance. Uh, obviously there's a lot of confusion and miscommunication uh, between residents as to what this all means and the impacts that, uh, that, that it will mean for each individual. So clearly we're, we're attempting to bridge that gap with information online, whether it's our website, social media uh, sites, so on and so forth. The fire department is curious um, with the impacts that this has had with just kind of general knowledge or, or residents about the referendum, if we should send out some kind of mailer, if you will, um, that kind of addresses some of these talking points. So we wanted to make sure this item was on the agenda so that if the board desires to put together a postcard or tri-fold brochure or something to that effect that we could get that in their hands before 
the referendum on the 14th. Actually, Joel, that was that was my comment. It wasn't the fire department's. Just uh, what I'm hearing from from citizens, there's a lot of concern that their taxes, because their the value of their home or property has gone up by 15, 20, 30 percent, or whatever their number is, are their taxes, their overall number that their tax going up. And I've done what I can to educate people as I see them uh, throughout the community, and, and always willing to offer up that education. But it was my question uh, that I, I wanted to be brought forward in, in front of the, the total board to see what type of action you'd like to pursue in educating the citizens of Greenville on what this revaluation means to them because it hasn't happened in 12 years. I think there's a number of people that either uh, have never been through this before because they've moved to Greenville just recently in the last 12 years, or it's been so long that they just don't know uh, what the impacts are anymore. And of course there are those, those people in the community that are up on this topic and, and are knowledgeable and helping share the education, but because there's so many that aren't, uh, I'm just wondering what how the town board feels about sending out, whether it's a postcard or trifold mailer, that gives education on what this means to the average citizen, uh, help calm some of their anxiety. I know if I was uh, uh, in their situation, I'd be very concerned about uh, my taxes that are gonna be due at the end of the year and into, into January of 2019. I'd be thinking about my if I had an escrow, uh, does that mean my bank's gonna make up for what I'm lacking in, in taxes over the sec last six months of the year? Uh, so I myself went through and try to figure out the math on how much mine would be going up, and it, it's pretty nominal. It's, it's about $50 or less. Of, even though the value of my home went up almost 30% or more, um, the, my taxes are only going up about $50, and that's because of that. So, and I don't know if that's exact, uh, but I want other people to uh, have some of their anxieties calmed, and, and then that's why I'm asking the board if they would, how they feel about sending out a, a post, postal mailing, a postcard, or a trifold. never understood how to assess assessment tax increase. I, as much as what I've heard and seen on Facebook, and I heard in church yesterday from a lot of people, uh, we need to do something here to bring them back in so they understand what's going on here. Because Sam, I gave you a blank. I, that's just ridiculous. But we need to do something here. It's got to be something very simple that will open up and they'll read. Basically. And explain to them that this is what's going on. I, I think one thing you maybe want to touch on, and I'm going to confuse the situation, is that the good news is, is that the purchase you did of a home was a good investment because your home is of decent value. You live in the town of Greenville. It's a, a place that people desire to live, so the value of your home has gone up, so it's been a good investment. But then you've got to explain also that just because the pay increase has gone up and you did that nice job, is that that necessar necessarily doesn't mean your taxes are going to go up. That it's just you did it out a different way. I don't know how to do that on a postcard. It's got to be at least something a little more comprehensive than that. Yeah. Well, I think you, can you, uh, you you can't direct everybody because not everybody has internet access. You can't you can't just put in there saying, "Are you nervous about your taxes going up?" Go to the town website to educate yourself exactly. further. You know, to make it that would be really simple. But not everybody has internet access, so maybe you could say something about you could either go to the town's website to get more more information. Or visit town staff at town hall, which, and they'll, they'll be happy to explain to you the impact, the minimal impact you'll experience because of this reassessment, positive or negative. To some people, it, because it is basically leveling the playing field, I'd like to say 50 50. 50% 50 of the people are going to see their taxes go up minimally, but 50% of the people are going to see their taxes go down as well. And that's not going to be a 50 50 match because of how things work out. But are going to see their taxes go down. And I don't think everybody understands that. It's just leveling the playing field on who's paying for the total tax levy, or how we're paying for the total tax levy. I don't know if you want to go there, Jack. I think there's a statement saying that your tax, should, your tax that you pay into your escrow or whatever is going to be affected very minimally. Right. So you really got to work on that, that your, your entire tax code should be not much one way or the other, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're talking probably more than likely a hundred dollars. So that's the right. conversation that Jack and I had, and, and that's what we routinely get in phone calls or inquiries at the office. My value went up 30%. Does that mean my $4,000 tax bill is going up 30%? Mm -hmm. No. 
yeah, that would be that would be pitchforks and tiki torches. People would be coming <laughs> after yep. the town in that circumstance. So no, that is not the case. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I think we would violate the law if we had to go out and tax our right. residents thirty percent more um, under those cir circumstances. I don't think anyone in their right mind would do that. No. So the the town's not adding any brand new service we've never offered before. There's nothing like that. So our levy's not changing. Uh, if it's changing, it's just because of new growth, so it's not significant. So we're not asking the, the total town to pay any more dollars in fees. The town of Beeville can pay for the expenses to provide the services of snow plowing and garbage removal and, and you know, maintaining roads and the, the parks and everything else in town. We're not asking for anything different. And so that total tax pool of $2.8 million, roughly, that we asked for last year is not changing significantly in 2000. So all we're doing is asking you for this, the, basically this revaluation that's leveled out, where that's coming from because you thought this much. And so it's not going to be significant in terms of like hundreds of dollars. It's, it's going to be pretty minimal. And, and like I, I, I wish the numbers would be dead on here and 50, 50. I know they won't be on here. But the, the same number of people that are going to see this taxes go up, minimally are going to see that decrease. So the same number are going to see this drop. understand where people's worries and concerns are about, and that's what tonight's presentation is to help with that. I don't know if this will get it out to everybody. I was watching Facebook Live as Joel was presenting. It did get up to 15 people that were watching it, but that's that was live. Uh, this can be shared, and I'm sure certain it already is being shared amongst the community to help educate people. I don't think it's enough. I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to see this, so I'm asking the board if, if you're willing to be approve a mailer to go out from the town staff, and I, I would look for it to go out as soon as possible. Tomorrow would be ideal. <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> in, the work, in, in your works with all the questions and phone calls you guys have been getting. But if we could get something out by the end of the week, it would get to the bulk of the residents next week and get some of those that are in other areas of the community that the mail's a little slower for, it would get to them the week after. So something that's simple, something that gives them direction, calms their nerves, calms their minds. An example, like you just had up there, a basic, right. simple example. Mm -hmm. Well, the two examples they had may be good, plus mm -hmm. and minus. They can and see both sides of it. And kind of reval 101 with uh, some FAQs and well, that's a couple examples. The it's and on then, the website. And then the show website. them the, the link is on the website, too. Yeah. And the fact that whatever happens, your taxes are not going to go crazy here. You're talking less than a hundred dollars, one way or the other. Right. And we really got to stress that because that's what Jesse said. We really got to get that. I suspect that's why this thing is coming. You had a comment, sir. So go ahead. Right. But I, I don't know what you paid for your home, but hopefully you paid what the assessed value was that you had previously somewhere in there. That means you got a steal and your properties are, well, you built it. So you're right. So yeah, I mean that, that should be very positive news for you that your, your home because of people's desire to move to this community for a variety of reasons, including our tax rate and our, our water and sewer rates. And it, and our quality of services, our, the town staff and the community in general, you're going up 19% in one year is because of the quality of life in Greenville. Yeah. And, and it doesn't mean that your taxes are gonna go up that much. Did yeah, you live in there a full year, a full 12 months in 2017 or 11 or 12, 10 or 11 months? I lived in there. Did you live there a full 12 months in 2017? Yeah. <laughs> um, we, the part that got me was the building. I was just trying to wrap my head around the timeline. So ever since I moved in there, I've been on a higher price plan. So my kitchen pot has always been a little bit Correct. bigger. And of course, with that, I'm just pretty much like gas is $1,000. Yeah. 
future because now I can live big enough and I'm just living on the street and I I can do comedy. But then the first memory of watching somebody get held in their house is not what No. Correct. It's just that that needs to be known. What, right. How that affects you because otherwise so it's just like we're doing what we can tonight with this Facebook Live presentation <laughs> and we're educating people as they call into the town staff. Uh, I know that the board members now are having the education as they see people around public, as I already have been uh, educating people. Do you have an opinion on sending out a postal mailer to our, our citizens of Greenville to help them become educated? Right. Like, I don't even agree with that. How is that not control? But then I, I think it comes under the same thing. You're adding stuff to the report or to the mm -hmm. level of the property value, which then it does make a difference. It does. But you have to understand that it means that you're just increasing your tax. So it sounds like you would be, as a citizen, you would be uh, in favor of getting a, uh, or having a postal mailing going out to the citizens of Greenville to help educate them. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then you see that, and it's kind of disconcerting. You're right. Oh, yeah. See that increase, right? So anything that we can do, including a postal mailer, would be a benefit to the town of Greenville and the citizens to help calm some anxieties and nerves about what their taxes will be when it comes to the end of the year. Okay. Are you looking for a motion, Mr. Chairman? I am looking for a motion. I'll make a motion that uh, we go and direct the staff to form a company called the Good Sense of America. And I'd like the idea, Mr. Chairman, is to run it by you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Dean. Dean, thank you. I'll second the motion. Andy's given a second. Any other questions or comments? I'm not hearing any or seeing any, so let's vote on this. All in favor of the motion as is stated, please state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The motion carries uh, for a postal mailing to go out directed by the town staff and approved by the town chairman before mailing. That takes care of item 7B. Moves us to 7C. This is discussion and possible action for a special town meeting on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, to be called by the town board pursuant to statute 60.12, uh, paragraph one, section C of Wisconsin state statutes. I'll move. Second. Questions or comments? Since there are none, let's vote on this. All in favor of the special town meeting for Tuesday, August 21st, should state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries, 7C is approved. 7D, discussion and possible action. This is approval of the sanitary, or sorry, sanitation and refuse collection co contract extension with Harders Fox Valley Disposal for March 1st, 2019 through February 28th, 2026. So we've talked about this contract. Joel's given us recommendations. And Joel, uh, what type of successes have you had with some of those negotiations? Well, ultimately, the contract was essentially the same as what we are currently in with Harders of the Fox Valley. Uh, there were two changes, or yeah, two changes to the proposed contract in your packet. In the original contract for the one, the price placement fee was increased from $65 to $75. We thought that was a reflective cost of how much car power in today's value. Uh, the other item is the fuel surcharge. So for fuel exceeds $4 per gallon, the fuel surcharge shall increase 1% for every 15 cent increase in fuel prices. I believe the current contract at 385 is actually a better increase there. Um, if you recall in, in closed session, we discussed the rate to guarantee um, to not exceed the annual CPI or 3%, whichever is the lesser of the two annually. Uh, they are willing to honor and oblige to that. That is consistent with the current agreement. Okay. So you're looking for action on this? So I'll make a motion to approve the sanitation refuse collection contract extension with Harders Fox Valley Disposal. Second. 
Mike Scoobin the second. Any questions or comments? Let's go forward with our vote. All in favor to approve the contract extension with Harder's Fox Valley Disposal, say so by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries, 7D is approved. 7E, this is for discussion, possible action, ordinance discussion on fireworks and noise. I'll try to take this one, Joel. I've gotten a number of email complaints and a few phone calls. Vicky's, uh, Vicky Prey, our town constable, has received some as well on our fireworks and noise uh, that we have. Right now, our ordinance states that users can get a permit and display fireworks once a permit is issued from June 15th to July 15th. Some people think that's a little too long. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't getting permits based on the fact that I think I've signed six or seven user permits. I know that there are six or seven people just in my subdivision that were shooting fireworks off on the 4th of July. Uh, one of those permits was issued to the Lions for their catfish races, so um, appreciate them getting their permit as, as is required. But um, I'd like to do something different but I don't know exactly what we need to do yet. So um, there is a citizen uh, that had sent me a, a survey that the village of Fox Crossing just put out this spring on fireworks. And I, I actually dug that up today and sent that on to Joel uh, as possible, something that we could follow up with as well. Uh, we have two vendors that like to sell fireworks here. Uh, I don't know if we need to change anything there. It's more about do we allow people to get a, a, just a general citizen to get a display permit, a user display permit? And how do we go about doing that? Is our, is our time period the same? So what I would recommend, and I would make a motion, would be to have the town staff put together a survey that could be sent out in electronic format, as did the Village of Fox Crossing, to uh, citizens, and utilize that survey and the results to make some direction going forward for our fireworks ordinances. So that's my motion. Be looking for a second. So a second has been received by Mr. Culberson. I didn't get any calls, but that's, uh, Vicki did send me a text message saying that she's ha she was getting phone calls. That tells me it wasn't issued through the town. It was probably issued by one of our vendors that are allowed to issue the user permits. Every single, that's every single permit. The conversation that we've had is, is, you know, it's one thing to allow the vendor to issue the permit. Mm -hmm. The vendor is obligated to list the date and the location of where those fireworks are going to be launched. But nowhere in the ordinance does it have any restrictions on time either. So 2 a.m. in the morning is okay so long as it's on the date mm -hmm. of and at the location determined. So, and obviously the vendors may not be indicating a date or a time on the permit. You know, maybe, and maybe it needs to be whatever ordinance states as far as dates and times, it probably should be on that that permit. So people know when they turn that off and they sign it, what they're dealing with. But it, it stopped for about half an hour and then it started back up again. What's so the difference between the red line and our display? Looks to be the same. They don't have to turn those in until the 1st of August, so I don't think we've gotten a full set of those. That is what's written in our ordinance. Mm -hmm. So I would like to s restate the motion is to have the town staff put out together a survey to get some feedback from our citizens. And then as a town staff, uh, we can take further action from that and what our findings are and give a recommendation to the board for changes. 
in the from the feedback that we get from citizens. So you know, we've heard about the time uh, that people can display it, the fact that th they need to have a date. And now just we just talked about the fact that our vendors that are in town need to give us a weekly update. Yeah, that would be very appropriate so that, you know, most of this happens on the weekends, not all of it, but to have our, at least our local law enforcement um, liaison, uh, Corey, come through and, and get those dates and give those to her peers who might be helpful as well. So I know that most people are asking for the town of Greenville to step up our enforcement on this. It's a very difficult thing to enforce, especially if somebody's quick about what they're doing, uh, even though they're loud, that might only be for a minute or two. Uh, that, but that minute or two can be very nerve wracking for others and, and I know they're pets as well. So I'd just like to move forward with this and motions will be given in a second if there's any other questions or comments. Is that a new motion? Nope, it was still the same one. Same, same motion, yeah. same motion, just asking staff to put together a survey and send it out, review findings. Yes, there's fines that can go up to a thousand dollars. If our ordinance allows fireworks that leave the ground and the community beyond, that's a discussion we can have as well. Unless we get a fine for that, right? Well, I think they did, but they went there Saturday night, wherever this was. They went there, but they had the permit. Our ordinance says that they can sell and use if they use this permit that they can launch fireworks that leave the ground. We should be clear that it's required. To, to give you an example, another my prior community, what we allow in terms of we can sell fireworks. There's no permit required necessarily to sell fireworks, especially in the municipality that's the use and display of those fireworks on a given day. So, so in my prior community, what they had allowed is that you could sell f uh, fireworks that were considered, I think, Class C, I think they were called, so a sparkler or a fountain, something that doesn't actually leave the ground more than, I think, three feet or two feet, something to that effect. So they allowed that. But anything beyond that required a special display permit from the town board. And in those cases, they also required some kind of insurance rider whether it's a homeowner's insurance policy or if it was a civic club that was launching a public display, they would have to have an increased value in their liability insurance as well. And that's pretty much the same from a private, if you will, residential display to a physical display or type of thing. They need to pay that back as well. Now, everything at that point basically became illegal. And so there could be issued citations uh, based on the statutory values, I think, of a minimum of $200 up to the max of a thousand. And I didn't get into this um, back and forth about valid permit, invalid permit, but it's just, you can do fountains and sprays and sparklers and that's fine. But anything beyond that, you have to take these additional fines and have those incurred as well. And these vendors can still sell them. It's just, they just can't necessarily sell them. Well, they can sell them to Greenville residents, but the Greenville residents will not be able to display it in Greenville at that time. Thank you. So let's... Let's see what we can do about a survey. A uh, motion's been made, the second it needs to be voted on, but that's that's what I'm asking for. Any other questions or comments, or can we go forward with the vote? I'm gonna go forward with the vote. All in favor of the motion as it was stated for the town staff to put together a survey on fireworks use in the town of Greenville. Uh, should state so by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Motion carries, seven E's approved for town staff to go forward and review a uh, survey to go out to town citizens on fireworks use. 7F would be uh, for discussion only. This is an update on the incorporation at the circuit court hearing date, August 29th, 2018. Yes, 9 a.m. if anyone's interested in attending that, they're certainly welcome to. I would ask Wendy to post a possible forum notice. We'd be curious to see how that all transpires. And then uh, I think that's it for that one. Takes us into item eight for closed session. And I'll make the motion to go into closed session. This would be pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 
Paragraph 1, Section G, for purposes of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved, more specifically concerning boundary agreements. Mark, second. give us a second. We'll go through our roll call. Mike, aye. Mark, aye. Andy, aye. Dean, aye. and Jackson, I. Dean and Andy was a second. Okay, it is now 826 and we're back in open session for the town board of the town of Greenville. There's no items to take action on from the closed session. That takes us to announcements. Joel, what do you have? Uh, just Thursday, August 9th at 6 p.m. We will have our final fire and safety um, building referendum presentation and open house at the fire station. Fire station, again, that's at 6 p.m. on Thursday, August 9th. The facilities committee will meet briefly before that at 5.30 p.m. just to review where uh, things are at. Uh, just a reminder, absentee voting, in-person absentee voting is currently ongoing and available for voters here in Greenville. Absentee voting will occur in the town clerk's office um, up until the Friday before the election at 5 p.m. And no voting will occur on the Monday preceding the election. Uh, and then election day again, obviously on Tuesday, August 14th. Polls will open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. on that date. Voters, if they have an in interest in what's on the ballot, they can go to the Wisconsin My Vote website. Just Google My Vote Wisconsin. Go right there and see what's on their ballot. They can register to vote or apply for an absentee voting, uh, absentee ballot by mail. Uh, we have an ad hoc fire committee on next week, Monday, July 30th. They're going to be reviewing some possible ordinance changes for the uh, potential creation of a official fire commission for the town of Greenville. And again, our incorporation hearing with the circuit court is on August 29th at 9 a.m. down at the Ottagini County Courthouse. That's all I have. When was the ad hoc one? 30th. July 30th. Time? I believe we set those at 6 p.m. Okay, thank you. So just an announcements I have are, are fairly quick. I don't have anything that's uh, meeting-wise, but I just wanted to let everybody know that Joel and I did meet with Roger Roth, as has Kevin Stern from the, the county. And we've also met with Dave Murphy, our state assemblyman, and talking about uh, a few of the issues that we see around our state highway corridors and trying to get some things changed. So just in an order of priority, we've talked about the Highway 76 and the speeds between Highway 96 and 15. And we there's something we've talked about as a board in the past, and we're looking for help from the, our state officials and getting that reduced, the speed limits there reduced, uh, ideally 45 miles per hour or slower. So um, all indications are if we, we try to pursue 45 miles per hour, it's probably more of a, more something that the state's willing to do than going down less than that. So yes, we've asked both of them to push this forward and any help they need from us just to ask and we'll try to follow up with them. The State Highway 76 urbanization project that has been uh, canceled, we're asking them to put that back on the agenda and talk about that some more. We've pushed uh, the fact that, that that road's not only very narrow, the way it's engineered for the amount of traffic that's on it right now, but there's a great deal of potential residential growth in that area of Greenville, as well as the potential for another school to go up in that area of Greenville, which would make a, a, a uh, grinding down and just basically repaving that road a frivolous and wasteful tax to the, for the tax dollars. Like them, if they're going to do anything there, to really look at it and do it right, and only have to do it once. So they're looking into that as well. Um, the, we'll be talking about a couple of different pedestrian crossings. From a town board standpoint during your budget season, one would be at the crossing right out on Municipal Drive and Parkview, and the possibility of putting in a crosswalk and some flashing beacons to uh, warn uh, vehicles that there's pedestrians wanting to cross. But also looking at uh, looking at an engineer to possibly come in and, and help us with what are the possibilities for the crossing at Hyacinth and State Highways 15. So just landmark-wise, that's by the twist. We've talked about that a number of times during our budget season as well. Uh, the flashing beacons are not necessarily the, 
the best solution there because of the, the four lanes. Uh, a bridge over the top would be not only expensive, but very difficult and expensive to maintain. Uh, the best solution may be a tunnel underneath, but we'd be looking at getting some state help uh, from an engineering standpoint and what are the possibilities of going forward with that. And then we also would like to always talk about the Highway 15 bypass project and the fact that our tax dollars continue to go to other parts of the state. So uh, State Senator Roth and, and Representative Murphy uh, are aware of the desires to keep money here. Uh, they both talked about the fact that the interchange on 441 t Highway 10 and 41 is finishing early. Uh, and so there's a, con a considerable amount of savings there. We'd like to see that dollar saved to stay here in the Fox Valley and, and go towards that Highway 15 bypass. So they're looking into that and are working on that. Um, continue to be the squeaky uh, wheel or whatever that's hopefully going to get the oil. So those are my announcements. And beyond that, if anybody else has any, since there's none, just need a motion to adjourn. Second that. Mark's given the motion to adjourn. Andy, a second. All in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Meeting's adjourned at 6.30.